What a grucky day. Yeah, it turned gray and cool. Kind of what we call a winter relapse day. Nowhere close to being a true winter day. It didn't get anywhere near freezing. It's Oh, it's afternoon. About 1.30. It's in the 40s. That's cool enough. And gray and yucky. Today we had a pretty cool story. We were doing a, a protest at a high school. And I mean cool in the sense that it was visual and, you know, the people who want to talk to you will all be there and they'll talk to you. I don't think the subject matter is necessarily cool. I mean, it's interesting. It's something we have to address, but... I don't know. Don't have the answers. So, I just literally got home. I'm tired. Hey, Buddha. <sighs> got home from work. Apparently, the missus has been fighting a battle all day with the carpet company. They have one last thing to do, which is our stairs. And she's been getting the runaround all day. They were supposed to be here. And they were supposed to be here, I think, Friday or Saturday. And she's been trying to call the, uh, the subcontractor, because this company, I guess, uses subcontractors. She's been trying to get a hold of them, and they uh, they they tell her that they have other jobs they're working on, and they'll they'll come. So finally, they're supposed to come today, anytime between whenever and 3:30. Well, I just got home at four, and I don't think they've been here. She's been waiting all day for them, and uh, she was even made herself late to her work which is going over lovely with them, I'm sure. And, it, you know, it's important that we have our jobs, so, I don't know. It's just, it's just really lousy. It's a lousy way of doing business. And, uh, um, you know, we had to struggle to get this hardwood floor in. I mean, the only part of it that's been good was the, uh, the sunroom floor. One guy showed up. I mean, he showed up late. Because he said there was a mix-up in the scheduling and the people who were supposed to show up didn't show up. So he didn't find out till. So he, you know, she took a day off for that. She was supposed to take one day off. And it was all supposed to be done in one day. It was the impression we got from the salesperson. It's been a whole week of this nonsense. And this is nonsense. This is no way to run a business. I'm bad at business. And I know this is no way to run a business is just mistreating your customers and uh this is what we have in the age of our current administration you know a bunch of empty promises and bad business dealings con men people who put other other people in front of uh their customers and i don't want to get preachy or anything about it i'm just tired and we're fixing to just tell them, no, forget it. Give us our money back. They probably have about a billion loopholes in that. And they say, you know, give us our money back. We, we don't do our stairs. Just thank your, your subcontractor, your, your, your subprime subcontractor for screwing it up for you. Apparently, whoever his other jobs are was more important than us. And apparently the company that that hired him to do this. Oh, you know what? I think he just showed up. Well, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna try and be nice and patient. But I don't know, I might just turn this camera around and roll on the whole transaction. Oh, okay. You want to take a look at your carpet? What's that? You want to go take a look? 
uh, take a look. The carpet is the right one. Oh, I, I would know if it was. Oh. <laughs> no matter. Okay, where is uh, the stairs? Only the stairs? Yeah. Close to here? Yep. Right. Have they told you anything about it? No. Oh, they haven't told you anything? No, nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. Is this the checkout thing? Yeah, this is the paper. You can already pay everything, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So, the status report is... Once they got in here, I guess they did an okay job. Pardon our messy basement. I mean, it's okay. When I filled out their little mandatory survey form, I didn't recommend the company. I said I won't recommend the company to family or friends. So maybe that'll raise an eyebrow, but I doubt it. Might get a call back. Why did you put that in there? And then we'll tell them why. Don't make your customers wait. But that's it. Hopefully that's, we're done with them. Don't need any more of their services or have any more relationship with them. Oh, look at this. <laughs> it's a minor thing, but these guys are just not very I know a lot of contractors would have a heart attack if they realize they left something like that. I say it's not a big deal, but they haven't been the best. It's more like they're in a hurry to get on to their next job. All right, doggies, wanna go somewhere? People park? Let's go. Let's go. Cat trying to get in. Cat. Cat is a blockade. All right, ready, pups? Kind of drizzly out. Come on, come on, come on, Jimmy. Let's go. Come on. There's Stella. Come on, Jimmy. Okay. 
guess you have to really pay a lot more money than we did to, to get whatever. And, and um, I think really it's like pick your contractor and don't go with, with subcontractors on any job. Just, you know, go with somebody who takes pride in their, in their job. And hopefully, since this guy was recommended to us by people we trust, the guy who's going to do our backyard will, will be the same. He'll, he'll take a lot of pride in it. And I mean, that's the, that's the truth all over the world with everything. You know, I, I, you know the, the problem with large corporations is like, to them, you're just another job, you know. And, and we got 20... 200 jobs to do today, you know, get them in, get them out, boop, boop. I don't know, I mean, I was thinking about that, and I'm saying that, and look at my car, is like, what a mess, that's one of the little projects we got to do, this probably this couple days off, is clean the car out, get it ready for, we got some guests coming in, and it seems like we're doing all these big projects, for guests that we have coming, but that's not the truth. The truth is, is that we've been talking about doing this for years, uh, like a lot of people, I guess. So we're finally getting them done and getting a feeling of some some sort of accomplishment with it. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can take our take our trips, our little road trips, and. Uh, I can share it in these videos, share something a little less mundane, a little more exciting, a little less boorish, and, uh, you know, we get to enjoy together some of these road trips, and at the very least have something to remember. In one half mile, take the exit. I always program the Garmin for everywhere I go, even though I know where I'm going, I just program it anyway because it's got the traffic built into it. So if there's an accident or something, hopefully it'll warn me. Usually the way this thing works, it warns you when you're in the traffic jam. You get in the uh, traffic jam with everything stopped for hours and it'll say, oh, by the way, traffic ahead. You might want to detour and you're like, oh, gee, thanks. Something I noticed too about the doggies, we gotta be careful when we say certain words around them because they know what an F bomb is and, and they react to it. Uh, they're very sensitive to it, they don't like it. They hear it and they're like, uh oh. That I guess to them that's the human equivalent of growling. Right, Jimbo? Are we growling when we say the F bomb? tell the dogs are not excited by the weather. I think they were kind of going, hey, the DP is that way. I'm like, well, yeah, we're not going to the DP. In it's too muddy, wet, mile, and kind of cold. On West 17th Street. I don't know if I brought any sweaters. I should have. But anyways, passing through colorful sections of downtown. And there's a lot of people who uh, like to wax nostalgic about what Kent City was like and stuff. But, um, <clears throat> let's just say that when we came to Kent City in the late 70s, this part of downtown at this time of day was not a pleasant place. You uh, literally, even if you're not one to really do this, you literally would want to roll your windows up and lock your doors um, and uh, that was back in the time when just about any car you had you had to roll you crank the windows up and uh, especially to the west here is what is called quality hill in the 70s it was not quality it was uh, the opposite of and then you would come into downtown and everything was just dirty and trashy and there were all sorts of people wandering the streets that were, you know, like hookers and drug dealers and 
and you just kind of went, ugh. I, you know, and the, that's really why Kansas City's downtown, that was probably the, uh, the lowest point in its history. That's why people just stopped wanting to come here because they were just like, it was completely taken over and nobody seemed to really care about it anymore. And, and um, they were built, busy building suburban shopping malls because we moved here in the late 70s. They also built Bannister Mall. And um, that was, uh, we were here in 78 and they opened Bannister Mall in 1980 and things just kind of reversed. Um, downtown started developing and getting better and nicer and Bannister Mall went downhill and now Bannister Mall is no longer it's a uh, it's a uh, office development for a major pharmaceutical company or not a pharmaceutical Ohio. company a major uh, medical Street. software company and um, yeah the, we, we saw the opening and the closing of Bannister Mall it was really sad and, Tore that thing completely down and um, you know it's just what happens when when security is like secondary you know and uh, the downfall of Bannister Mall and places like that was that you you didn't feel safe getting out of your car and walking across a parking lot and while you were in the place you felt like well is my car being broken into and uh, when that happens I don't care how nice the place is, it's it's gone. It doesn't take very long. And uh, the rest of that, that complex... Turn right at the stop sign. You know, there are a lot of stores that were auxiliary to Bannister Mall, and, and uh, a lot of them had to shut down. I asked one uh, manager of one store, why is it that you guys are shutting down? They said, well, because the crime is so bad in this area that we can't afford to stay open because all our merchandise is just literally walking out the door and we can't you know you think well uh, call security call the police but we would be spending every moment of every day talking to police and filling out forms and this and that and you just can't afford to stay in business that way and um so yeah you know it's just it's sad Turn it's sad what a very small Street. group of people can do to any area can just destroy it quick, quickly and completely. Anyway, we just we've arrived. I don't know if we we'll have jazz tonight, but we'll see. We'll see. So we're here. We're queer. Get used to it.